everyone and welcome to the G Sport Hub. Alright. Once again, we had an amazing week in the LGL, and then this is the weekly recap, my new series. So after I edited the previous weekly recap, I realized it was 25 minutes long. And this time around, we have even more games. I'm probably gonna talk less about each one of them. But we had three amazing match days, and on top of that, we had Nemo's LGL caster debut. In case you don't know who Nemo is, he was playing support last year for CJ, and he's probably one of the best trash players in Japan. So with all that being said, no surprises here, we have our standings. Top three is basically what everyone expected. The Hooks and Sengoku are still undefeated, and unfortunately we have to wait until week 5 to see them play against each other. And on the third place there is DFM, who after losing to Sengoku looked much better, they said they have drafting issues and apparently they've already fixed some of those. And at the bottom there is Burning Core and V3, still winless. And we also have the middle of the pack, basically what we were expecting. And before going to my next segment, just a reminder, this is our last 13.1 patch week, we're gonna switch to 13.1b, and if you're curious what the pros think about the changes, watch my translation videos because they're talking about that. Alright then, next segment, the best of the week, and uh, it's not a surprise, it has to go to Loken. <laughs> And not just because this week he got a quadro kill, but throughout the whole week he had exceptional performance. 11 1 5 and 7 2 9 on Zeri. And even though Stengoku's bottling has only played Zeri Yumi so far, you shouldn't write off their performance. They executed those comps perfectly. And starting this week, Yumi is dead, so I can't wait to see what they're cooking up next. <laughs> and the week of the week. It has to be game 3s because they barely ever show up. So far from the 10 overall matches we had, only 2 went into game 3. And finally, both were CJ matches, a team that is kinda known in the past for being coin flippy, so it's totally on brand. Now let's start the matches. And because I don't want to have a 40 minute long video, I'm gonna just speed run them. V3 and the Hoax. The first place team versus the last place team. And both game 1 and game 2 and just V3 in general can be summarized by their, their trying, but more than anything else, props to Hiroki who was very aggressive in the jungle, but if you take a look 8 minutes, the gold was already in favor of the Hawks and this is just because lane advantages and objectives. At 50 minutes the Hawks already had 5k gold lead and this is just making this game unplayable for V3, something they have already struggled with. Even though they have Azir, Zeri, and Yumi. I keep saying this, but V3 is not bad in mechanical situations, like they can get solo kills, but the problem is due to farm and objectives in favor of the hoax, mid game comes and in team fights they're fighting against more than 600 gold lead. With all the daughters destroyed, SHG won in 26 minutes in a dominating fashion, and if you look at the gold graph you can see why V3 keep losing, they just bleed so much gold out as time goes on. And game 2, same story. I don't want to talk too much about this, but it was an important game because it started the flood of ABC supports this week. And it wasn't just Caitlyn's support that worked out for SHG, they got double scuttle plates and even the first dragon. Once again, same story, Hiroki was aggressive and honestly rather see that from rookies, but SHG obviously a lot more experienced team. Still, it's is the flame V3 for screen up fights, but everyone should keep in mind they were put in LGL with little to no experience. And I genuinely think this aggressiveness is gonna help them in the long run, especially now that we have BO3s. Anyways, well, objectives and farm still in favor of SHG, so 7k gold lead at 20 and high would expect it. Honestly, they need a better coach and maybe some more time because I would doubt they have too many screen partners, so really only the stage games are the ones that they can improve on. But yeah, good luck for them, I do think they're getting better even if it's not apparent on the scores. CJ DFM! CJ just barely miraculously won the last game and DFM was dominated by Stengaku, so both teams were here to prove themselves. And in game 1, just like I said in the previous video, I was genuinely amazed by Kassin. He had Steel's numbers with not just a successful invade, but also a kill onto Steel. 
Still, even after a lackluster game versus Sengaku, the FM's bot side finally shown what they can do with hard flashing in for the polymorph, ensuring the FM's early lead, and even with Kashin's amazing awareness focusing on bot constantly, meanwhile Arya got fed on the Ari and even top us over after a failed die from CGA. This is why the FM is usually dominating LJL. You can't just focus on all the FM's lanes and everyone has scary potential. Uh, well, GG into game 2, yes. Jean support. Jean, Jean, Jean support. Uh, Jean support. So first of all, rules have changed, and it was still this time around was aggressive, but even then, still Kashin was able to get the early leads. And now this is where the fun part comes. Thanks to Harp's great rotations, the FM was able to win a team fight, and Harp got a double kill. So the question is now. Who is the AD carry? <laughs> but it really seemed like the FM has finally found their footing, their rotations are on point, their synergy was on point. Finally, this looked like the DFM we know and love. On to Saturday! We had a very quick day actually, so let me just speed run what happened. Sengoku versus Axis! Um, I don't think it comes to a surprise to anyone, but Sengoku is kinda good. Even with our unretired Pez getting solo bold at 5, Jet, top 2 mid laner in the LJ right now, was on Akali, and Loken and Anti were on the Zumi, so you kinda see where this is going. There weren't many kills in the early game, but Jet was getting fed with every kill, and it took access to overstep just a little at 18 minutes, and suddenly, team fight was won, and it was inevitable. Inev inevitable. For all the carries to eventually pop off. Kill after kill after kill. After kill! Sengoku was playing safe, so it took them just under 30 minutes to end the game, but it was dominating nonetheless. Jet ending on 11, 1, 4, and Logan ending on 11, 1, 5. Ooh, rough! Game 2, exactly the same situation and almost exactly the same draw from Axis. And while Jet was on Talia this time, it didn't stop him from dominating again. At 5 minutes, once gang bot lane and gave the first bat to Loken, and at 10 minutes, Jet has joined the party as well, making sure that Axis won't get a chance. The gold cap being somewhat equal for a while, but the nail in the coffin was Loken getting another kill and the herald as well. And Axis was not held by the fact that Yumi denied every good pick, and finally, yes, that play happened that sealed the deal. At 23 minutes, Sangaku not just top Axis lost the opportunity for the Baron, but Loken also got a quadra kill on the Zeri. <laughs> Zeri was a uh, kind of fat at that point, and just a few minutes later, SG won the series without too much sweat. Next game! I told you I'm speedrunning. Burning Core versus Fennel. Game 1. Uh, Burning Core willingly picked Kassadin into Skarner, so... Oh, the game didn't start off too badly for Kassadin, while Fennel got two kills in a team fight, Kassa immediately equalized that with a double kill, and honestly, the match was kind of back and forth in the beginning, the camera couldn't even pan fast enough to catch all the kills happening from side to side, but eventually, it happened. No matter how good of a pick Kassadin is, Skarnor just nullifies all his dashes and flashes, and there was not a single low respecting citizen. No, all of them committed tax fraud. It was just too easy for Hachimacha to grab anyone and sentence them to certain death. The game went on for a little longer, mostly getting objectives and farm up lanes, but 25 minutes comes, about 6k gold lead for Fennel, and there was not a single team fight from now on that Beastie could take. And now, as for game 2, at 3 minutes, um. Okay, yeah, so next game, for real, uh, Lem is pretty much doomed. And Zeri, not even at an assist at 8 minutes, but also a kill at 12, making sure that she has 100% kill participation. And had the immortal shield bow ready for the next team fight. And even if the gold was equal, after Fennel winning a team fight at Herald at 16 minutes, even that hope was lost for BC. Recap's amazing shuffle was just the icing on the cake, granting them the comfortable 4k lead and immediately after a 20 minute baron. Final from there played exactly textbook like and just over 25 minutes won the series. Lost day! The only 3 game series this week and only the second one this season, none other than CGA versus the Hopes. 
the return of Marvelous Draven. He had a fantastic performance on him last week and the trend just continues. While it was a 2-1 match, all the individual games followed about the same pattern. Game 1. Black was able to early on invade the jungle of Silas and gift first but to Dasher who was playing Syndra. And as much as I praised Kastin before, this game, he had a few oopsies. While the Hawks were slowly gaining lead, the Draven payout at 10 minutes just made everything even harder. Immediately more than 4k gold lead. Needless to say, the Hawks won early game by a lot. The Red Blades farm Draven payout and even misplaced from CGA. SNG eventually won all fights and slowly choked out CJ for the victory. Game 2. I don't even feel like calling out ADC supports anymore. Last game Vista was playing Kaylin and this game Jin, so I guess this is the world we live in right now. As for the game, very quickly, first one actually took a while. There has been some fights and SAG not without risk took the Drake, but no casualties. It was a Herald fight at 9 minutes, where CJ finally started controlling the map. Nap got a double kill on Cassante, and Honey also got the Caitlyn, this time an actual 80 carry Caitlyn on the board. Later on, SNG overstepped a bit for Kashin, and Yucho got two kills too, so um, looking rough for SNG, only 12 minutes in. And uh, it's not gonna get better. At about 10 minutes to the timer, the next big team fight at the Baron, an official quadra kill for Honey, and an easy Baron for CGA. They took their time a bit, obviously didn't want to rush against a good team like SAG, but at 35 minutes they finally broke the base and tied up the series. Game 3 kind of basic draft, with the exception of Kinetsu's GP. Now GP is actually not that popular in the LGL, so it's not common to see people pick him up. Anyways, Blank got Elias too, now which is a highly contested pick, and after a late invade, invited his whole team for a party, taking first blood onto Victor. And with Heimer getting a kill, followed by the Syndra getting one as well. Yeah, it didn't look great for CJ. And it just... Uh, it never got any better. Even with the Miracle Baron still by Kashin, still wasn't able to stabilize the gold by any means. Right the next fight for a dragon, SAG not only put up the dragon, but also two kills, so needless to say, the Baron did barely anything. And since the Hawks were stacking the dragons, they got Elder also fairly quickly at 33 minutes, and with the help of that, bought some purple good team as they ended the game just a few minutes later. Alright, last match of the week, it must have been super close and exciting, like how LEC ended their split. And no, DFM versus V3. So, you know the drill, V3 is the team who is here to learn. Like, it's not a shocker DFM won, so I'm gonna focus on what V3 did right instead. So first game, oh dear! Really OP pick on the top lane right now and for whatever reason, pros are just hesitant to pick him up. Against the Maokai, Talia, Jean and Heimer. Alright, there is still room to improve, but at least the game had a great start for V3. Immediately it was starting with a solo ball by the Udyr. And as we have gotten used to it, Hiroki was proactive in the jungle, pulling off successful ganks at only 8 minutes already. But now comes the DFM Yono. Their comp came into effect not long after, first Yudapon getting a kill, and shortly after Arya joined the fun too, with a Talia ult into a fight. And yes, Hiroki may be impressive as a rookie, but just the DFM is DFM, and DFM's comp is really good. From here on, the team fights were just insane from the FM, and even without equalizing the killer score, they were ahead of V3 by a few thousand gold. Oh my god, just, just look at that combo! Yeah, uh, GG. Game 2, it is a lot more bloody game, but also a lot quicker. Immediately it started off with Arya's first blood and Steel's dive, which even though it was a 2 for 1 trade, it was 2 kills for Yutapon's Varus. And again, I just have to mention, Hiroki had once again a fantastic gang, 2 kills for V3, and even a shot down the Varus. And um, still 2k gold lead for DFM through just pure laning. I'm not even saying V3 had horrible fights either, they were able to get some great picks. If you look at the kill count, the match is miles better than the last one, but we all know in the end gold matters more and more and more, phew, it was not looking great for them. Just, just, 
look at it. So when the FM wins the Harold fight, it's not surprising why they are still dominating. I just hope that V3 is gonna review these VODs very in depth and find the small mistakes they made so they can improve on. And to no one's surprise, at 18 minutes DFM had a 10,000 gold lead, taking every single objective and every single minion possible. And slowly taking their time, taking their fights, with an early Baron, they finally won the game. And uh, this is all! This is all the games! To round up the weekly recap, just a few more stats. This week we actually seen Zumi and Luna dropping in percents. And it was none other than the AD carry support taking their place. It was Ash this time around who had a 100% presence, I guess mainly for support, and Maokai as well as Ryze still keeping this precious 100% presence up. Presence, presence, slot. The biggest winner of the week is no doubt Maokai who won all the 6 matches he was played on, though to be fair Maokai was only played by the Hawks, Sengaku and DFM are top 3 teams. And our most played champion was Kasante in a staggering 9 games with 78% win rate. So this is a weekly recap, I hope the length is a little bit better this time around. But be it about the length, be it about the content, feel free to leave me any feedback. I love making deals and I wanna find a balance between doing deals and meet the team and all other content. But as long as you guys like it, I am more than happy to make them. So this is the weekly recap. But don't forget, this is not all. You can follow G Sport Hub in all possible social media platforms. Follow those because I'm gonna make all kinds of content. And while this is a League of Legends video, don't forget that V City Locking starts February 13. And we have two Japanese teams, DFM and Zeta Division there, so it should be very fun. And subscribe to not miss out on this amazing content. I was Tina with G Sport Hub, and see you next time.